Are you a fan of passive income and investing? Well, if you are, you're in luck. Because today I'm going to talk about Realty Income, the monthly dividend company. Hey, and it's been paying a dividend for over 50 years. It's a dividend aristocrat with a juicy yield of about 5.6%. So why not get it into your portfolio or add to it if it's already there. In this video, I'm going to talk about five reasons why I'm actually buying into it. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Mark of Desperately Seeking Fine. So what is going on with Realty Income? It's already at almost a one year low trading in around that $55 mark and paying out a whopping 5.6% yield. And that's something that I'm interested in. What are potentially some of the reasons behind it actually dropping in value? It could be something to do with, it is recently just bought into the Bellagio investment, costing it almost a billion dollars. But do we think that this is the main thing. I'm not sure that they re investors really have a reason to be really concerned about this. The dividend coverage is good. The operating performance for this REIT is good and other metrics look pretty good for the business. So I think it probably does offer a reasonably good investment opportunity for dividend investors and that 5.6% dividend yield is certainly appealing. Secondly, its dividend yield is as high as it's been for a number of years. I think the last time we were at a position like this was in around COVID in 2020. So another good reason to start buying in at this low price. So as things get slightly better, you start getting some of that growth coming from the increase in the actual cost of an individual share. So you get that kind of growth. And I suppose if we think back to 2020, what really caused all of those doubts about this stock, we were sat there and we were going, everybody's going to be working from home. Where are they making all their money from? They're making their money from real estate and people just weren't going out because we were going through lockdown. So that potentially was what made investors fearful back at the last time that we were in around that 5.5% dividend yield. Sometimes when we see dividend stocks increasing that yield, that's a sign that something is wrong and people should start panicking. What does it look like for Realty Income? Do we think there is an issue with them being able to support their dividend payments? What's your cash flow like? And on cash flow, what we look at within a rate is we look at more the adjusted funds from operations, AFO. This is a really good metric to look at when we're diving into something like Realty Income and the FFO for this company is pretty solid. So in the second quarter, we were looking at, it was a pound per share and that was 3.1% higher than a year before and that easily covered by the period $0.765 per share dividend. So we're managing to cover that. And then looking for the year, management are anticipating that the FFO per share is gonna be in the region of somewhere around $4. So that compares very favorably to that annualized dividend of 3.066 per share dividend. So all in all, cash flow isn't really causing me a major concern. And another thing on resilience for really income, if we look back, lots of REITs went through a really difficult time when we went through that COVID period. And that wasn't the case for really income because of the quality of companies that they have leases with. And actually they're sat at something like 99%. Even during that period of COVID, really income still managed to generate a 2.1 earnings per share growth during that financial year. And most of the rest of the rates were in negative, negative grounds. We always talk about diversification and that is one of the strengths that this company has. They are really resilient because they've got a massively 
diversifies real estate uh, portfolio and they are starting to build that out even further with some of the other um, purchases that they have made recently and if you look at their positive earnings growth 26 out of the last 27 years have shown that growth and also if we have a quick look at this diagram it shows us that growth in dividend payments as well um, going back over a number of years. They are also showing really strong performance when it comes to their occupancy and they are expanding out into the European market as well into places like Spain and France recently. Historically they have had a 99% occupancy rate which is pretty good and that's sat at almost five percentage points above the average for the S&P REIT market. So let's have a quick look at risks with realty income. I suppose one of the big risks that we have is all around valuation. They have got high net worth tenants who could potentially go and look at picking up a lower rent with a competitor. They also don't have a great ability to manage to raise those rent so once again they potentially have an issue with managing to grow the company if you think about it smaller rates it's much easier for them to grow but 10 percent growth of a really large company is much more difficult than 10 percent of a smaller company's growth there are competition issues out there as well but having a quick look at Real the income, is it a bargain? It is something I'm buying into, but as I always say, I'm looking at growing for the long term, so I'm happy enough to be taking that dividend payment of somewhere in around 5%. Once it drops on to 4.5%, I would potentially look at reducing the holding in that and then potentially going for something with a higher payment. And while I always say go and do your own research and do your own due diligence and before investing reach out and speak to an independent financial advisor and get some investing advice. I am putting my money where my mouth is on this one and I am constantly just buying in a couple of extra shares as we see a bit more value coming into this certainly as it started to move um, below that $60 mark that's where I started to buy in a little bit more aggressively and this is the largest individual stock holding that I have within my portfolio. So hope that's of some interest. Why don't you go and have a quick look at this video that talks about dividend ETFs and some potential options that may give you a slightly better return than this. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.